I am so freaking excited. I'm back in Japan after two and a half years and I'm finally able to visit the first koi breeders here again in Japan. <music> So Japan was closed for more than two and a half years. Now it's finally open again for business travelers. But there are two things that are different than before. And one of those two things is... One of those two things is probably the most important one. And that is the current situation around the pandemic. There are still rules here in Japan and I really respect those. It's about the healthy of the Japanese people and Japanese breeders. I want to thank the Shintaro Koi Farm for getting me over here. They arranged everything for me, all the paperwork and of course the invitation to get here. As a tourist, it's still not allowed to get into Japan without a guide. So I'm very happy that I am able here to record and promote Promote the Nishiki Goi. The second thing is that I'm going to make more vlog videos than the normal 10 minute videos that I normally upload on my channel. I think it's pretty important to you guys get to know a bit more of me. I've been behind the camera with a reason because it's not the most fun part to do to be in front of the camera. But I think it's important that you guys know a bit more about me. It's for me also a challenge to be more in front of the camera. So the videos will be longer, less edited, uh, some more raw footage. And I hope you guys appreciate that. So if you like that, please let me know in the comments if you have some ideas for new videos or for even for new ideas for visiting ponds or doing in Japan or somewhere else around the world. I'm now with Kosuka and we are on our way to the big koi house now and then maybe we're going to visit some other nice places. Just waiting. Oh, I have to wait. <laughs> yes. So I already got a small tour here around the Shintaro koi farm and this is their new koi house. They got four very big ponds here and every single pond is around 20 tons, so 20,000 liter. So in total they have 80,000 liters here of water to receive new koi. Most of the koi are at the mud ponds at the moment, uh, but everything is ready for new koi, the new koi that still has to be born or the koi that will be harvested in I just asked Kosuka, this stays here at the farm and those koi are waiting for their shipment probably somewhere this week or maybe at the end of the season. Uh, I think yeah, there are around 200 big koi. These koi are around, I think, some are already 25, maybe 30 cm. Beautiful. Thank you. He doesn't want to go. Go! Go back to your friends. <laughs> So most of the time I'm here in the autumn and everything is quite colorful. But now it's the first time that I'm here in summertime and everything is so green and I really, I really like that. Um, of course, autumn has a lot of colors, uh, but guys, look at that view. Isn't it beautiful? I like it. Good view. Yes. Really good. It's so peaceful out here. Beautiful. I just arrived at some of the Shintaro mud ponds. Check them. These are Tosai mud ponds? Yes. So all the koi that are in those mud ponds are one year old, ready to grow and be harvested in uh, October. 
So this is all fried. This is very, 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 very small. I don't know if you can see it, but those koi are <laughs> very small. I will try to zoom in. Maybe you can see it. How old are they? Uh, how old are they? Those. Uh, two weeks. So yeah. those koi are Did mud pond one week. two weeks old, and they are in the mud pond now for one week. Can you see how small they are? This is how it starts. So, so tiny. So what the breeder do is, after how many days first and bed sold? More. One, one month? One after, okay. Month. So after four weeks, after one month, they collect all, all the small fish and then they are going to select the first koi. And first time color, eh? only color. Yeah. Yes. So the first time they select the koi, it's only they just have to do it with the color, so then they decide if the koi is uh, good or not. And uh, they do the first selection round. They're so tiny, look at these guys. So 10,000 of little kohakus are in here together with some small frogs, some baby frogs, waiting to, to be grown and harvested after two weeks from now for their first selection round. Pretty insane if you know that the big koi we see in the koi houses start like this, this small. So in this, this mud pond, the tosai are released a week ago. Some people uh, ask me sometimes what they do to protect the ponds. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this pond is covered with fish liner. Birds cannot uh, go here and try to attack the koi. So we have a big feeding machine over here, tied up to this uh, special part because there's some bears, they try to open it. It's the lunchbox for the bears, as Kosuko calls it. <laughs> the feeding machines here. So this is pretty stable. We got the solar panels on it. It's empty. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now just stay. Okay, so they have to wait with eating. They already know we are here. I don't know if you can see him, but the group with Tosai is swimming just beneath us. Quite a big mud pond for Tosai. In summertime, mm -hmm. uh, take movie very, very easy. So everyone, hey, lunchtime. Oh yes, and they come up, yeah. yeah. Back at the koi house of Chintaro. It's around 11 o'clock a.m. now. Um, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning because of my jet lag, but everything is, uh, is good now. So uh, those ponds are ready to get filled with the nets with eggs later. So this is for spawning. So the eggs will attach to those brushes and then they will go in here to, to hatch. So that's pretty cool and they have three of those ponds they will be aerated a lot so there will be a lot of air and a lot of fresh uh, fresh water too so it is around one o'clock in the afternoon yeah so it's one o'clock exactly one o'clock in the afternoon Japanese time so now it's seven hours earlier back in Holland so I'm pretty tired I have some problems with the jet lag but when I'm watching the koi and enjoying uh, and enjoying the family together with Shintaro, it's, uh, it's very nice. Uh, we had a great lunch, so my stomach is full and now I just wanted to go and sit here and enjoy all the koi. So we have one kohaku, female kohaku in the first pond, then we have the males in the second, females in the third and the males again in the fourth uh, pond. Uh, they will be used for spawning uh, this week. So that would be, uh, will be pretty interesting uh, content, of course. So what I'm going to do, because this is not the normal types of video I'm creating right now. I just want to put as much as raw footage in there without too much editing, without too much maybe music, but I will see later because music also adds some extra vibe to the videos. Um, so that is that I'm going to do right now. So this will be probably part one and what I'm filming the rest of the day. So part two will be uploaded. Uh, probably after two or three days because I'm now uploading twice a week. I saw in my analytics that only 30% of you guys, for all the people who are viewing, 
subscribe to my channel. It would mean a lot to me if you want to subscribe to the channel. Uh, just leave a comment about the new content style. And for me, it's just a learning process. So I'm going to sit on that chair over there and going to enjoy the, uh, the koi. I wish you guys a very nice day and see you in uh, part two. Welcome back guys to uh, a new episode on the channel. I am still with uh, Kosuka-san from the Shintaro Koi Farm. And we are on our way to the main mud pond in... Kawaguchi? Yes, Kawaguchi. Kawaguchi. Pretty nice. So this is part two of day one. You probably have seen day one already. So we're on the way. Uh, it's still good weather, uh, if you have, as you have seen in part one. I know from previous harvest that mud pond that we are now going to visit is uh, pretty big, uh, with a lot of big koi in there. I will show you uh, the regular check what we're going to do. And um, I have my boots on. Kosuka has his boots also with him, so uh, will be fun. to the main mud pond. This year there are around 55 or 50, 65 koi in, um, in this pond. And they are released one week ago. And Kosuka told me he visits this pond every single day. And most of the time in summertime, of course, to restock the koi food machine. Uh, I'm happy we have a, a good car. <laughs> That was a big frog. Yeah. <laughs> that was dinner. It was a dinner. No. <laughs> so these is this is the main mud pond and as you can see the koi are not afraid to visit us. And they know we are here now. So it's pretty exciting. So this is a bigger feeding machine. Probably, I don't know, 50 liters will go in here. It has a solar panel and it has, I don't know how you say that in English, but it divides the koi food into the main mud pond. I, I almost didn't recognize it because when we are here in October, the water is released out of the mud pond and sometimes the wall is well, I think almost two meter down. Um, we see also a lot of plants now and during summertime or autumn, it's a bit less. Well, there they are again. What a great view. Wow. It's beautiful. Yes. Really beautiful. They're so big. Start feeding in July. Extra no. feed. This one. Oh, this month already yeah. start with extra feeding. No yeah. For the price, sometimes. Yes, yeah. sometimes extra. Um, too. Everyone come. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Everyone running. Oh, here. Here is the food. Give food. Yeah. Exactly. We have Sanke. Yes. I see Kohaku. I will try to get my GoPro. Maybe it's fun to put it in here too and try if we are able to get some great footage from the GoPro. It's not raining, but as you can see, there are all small animals on the surface water. All extra koi food. <laughs> Wow, that's a big one. Look at the skin color of the sanke. The whole group is passing by the feeding machine. 
going back into the mud pond. How deep is the mud pond? How big? How deep? You think? Three or four. Four meters. meters. Yes. So I think we got company of around 20, 25 of the koi. The rest is probably somewhere else in the mud pond. Pretty fun to see it now in summertime instead of autumn. Um, I will try to show you the difference next autumn when I'm back here also in, uh, in Japan. So this is the overflow of the mud pond when there is too much rain because the rain season will start pretty soon. This will be the overflow into uh, to the kennels and it flows away to the big river. This is pure fresh mountain water and Kosuka is going to show us where it's coming from. This is... Uh, ah, perfect. So this is where the fresh water comes from. You can also hear some water running downhill. Up to the next pond and this is not a sponsored video by Pepsi because we also have Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> but <coughs> we earned it, we just visited the main pond and now we're on our way to the, uh, to the next one. Oh, be careful. <laughs> this is, I guess, Sansai. This is Nisai. Yeah, Nisai. Yonsai? Sansai. Yeah. Yes. Sansai, so how many? Um, how many? Yeah. Yes. Koi? Fifty, maybe. But very big mud pond. Very long mud pond. So they have enough space. Here you go. Many Nisai. So most, the most fish they have are Nisai at the moment. Most, most of the mud ponds are filled with two-year-old koi. And they're just chilling now, getting used to the mud pond because they're just in here for a few weeks. And from within now uh, two weeks, all the feeding machines will start giving food to the um, extra food to the koi. And this is the mud pond where the three and four year old koi are in. Your feeding machine is gone. This one? Food box, yes. A more bigger. A oh, bigger one, so. yeah. Those koi are also much bigger than the Nisai two year old. So this is three and four year mixed. Try to step on it. Great Kohaku. Well, it's a sunk actually. Okay, hello there. So they already know that this, this will be the place for their feeding machine. That's the reason why they are showing up now beautiful so now you can see koi are social animals they really like to follow each other and living together in a group nice i love that sumi on that sanka i hope it's good to see on the footage for me, it's hard to uh, to see it now because of all the light on my screen. There's another Kohaku coming inbound. Such a peaceful environment to be here. It's strange because I've never been here before in the summertime and I've mentioned it now a couple of times. And it's so quiet here. All the fish are just swimming around, growing here in the mud ponds. Breeders are busy with the breeding and spawning of the uh, parent koi. 
um, I think it's quite interesting. Of course, when you are here in October in the autumn time, it's very entertaining to see the breeders pulling out their koi from the mud ponds. But nowadays, um, there's so much more than only the harvest. And this gives me the opportunity to ask more questions to the breeders with how they do it and experience the breeding life. I think that's very special. Beauties. Look at those fish fin. And they're big already. Imagine how they look like when they're getting out of the mud pond after four month growing season. Cool. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new episode here on the channel and I will remove my face mask just to record the video and then I will put it back on. Today we start our video here at the Nishiki Goi Museum in Ojiya. If you want to know everything about the history of the Nishiki Goi, or better known as Koi, then this is the place you should be. It's absolutely very informative and educational. You can learn a lot about it. You can also so watch and enjoy some amazing Koi. So let's go inside. So I already like the entrance of this museum. So this museum goes back in time quite a while and this is very important for Ogia. Everything and everywhere you go you see only koi. So everywhere on the streets, like for example here, everything has to do with koi. This is of course the birthplace of the Nishikigoi. Overview over here of the museum. I'll try to zoom in for you guys. So it's uh, pretty big. Uh, they have some nice koi swimming here. Uh, breeders help donating koi sometimes and together this is very important for uh, for the hobby. So we're finally in the koi museum. Uh, I've been here before and it's quite interesting and quite nice. So what we have here is some really important history uh, about the Nishigigoi. Uh, I will try to get a print screen into our video right now. Um, this is really important because it says everything about the history and which kind of varieties has been developed here in this region, uh, Ojia and Nagoka. So it's pretty interesting. So if you come here, take your time to get all the information because not only about the names, but also about real about the history of the Nishikigoi. So this is probably one of the most important uh, pictures I've seen. This is um, the schedule of how all the different koi varieties are created here in Japan. Um, so as you can see we have Asahi, Sanke, Goromo, uh, Kujaku, Showa, Shira Utsuri, Hiutsuri. All the different varieties are on, uh, are on this picture. Of course there are nowadays more varieties than available but this is how everything started. This is um, a beautiful schedule of how the Nishiki Goi is developed here in Niigata. So then we have Kohaku, Taisho, Sanshoku or Sanke, Showa. This is part of the Go Sanke variety or group, Go Sanke group. And then we have the Hi Utsuri, so orange with black. Then we have the Shiro Beko, Shiro means white. Then we have Asagi. Kinshoa, Kujaku, Jinrin Shah. I'm not gonna name them all, but they are here on the list. Um, people are able to sit over here and, well, normally there's a video playing about the breeding and the whole process. So, so it's good for children. It's good for people around this area in this prefecture or from all over the world like I am doing to see everything about the history of the koi. So let's continue. So we have a small shop over here. I'm going to skip that because I'm on my way after this to the koi shop. We have some small displays. Again, a lot of pictures with a hobbyist from England joining the harvest. Cool to see all kind of information. So this is probably, th this is the big pond from the koi museum. And this is so cute. Kids are feeding the koi some koi food out of an ice cream cup and they are hungry look at this guys that is insane <laughs> very cool 
So this is a big showing pond where people can learn more about the koi. We got all different varieties in here. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I really like it. So let's take you to uh, the other side of this museum. Let's go outside. It's not super big, but it's fun to see. And they put a lot of money, time and effort in this museum to talk more about the history of the Nishigiyoi. So this is the outside outdoor garden of the Koi Museum. And we have more people that are feeding the Koi. This is so cute, look at this. Isn't it great guys? Children can feed the koi here and learn more about Nishigigoi. Okay, so let's continue through the garden. We got some more people over here, of course. We have some huge waterfalls. This is pretty smart because what they did with this line is they keep preventing all the uh, proteins that come from, of course, like the koi food getting into the pond. So they can scoop this out. It's like a skimmer, so it's pretty well done. Of course, again, a lot of fish here that are uh, ready to eat. <laughs> like it. All right, so let's continue. Oh, my camera stuff is there. <laughs> also very important. Let me turn the camera around. Um, it's quite a busy day. Uh, I'm on my way after this to the Agenji Koi Farm. Uh, I didn't see them for two and a half years. And I really like the brothers Toshinori and Daisuke. They are pretty nice breeders. And I really missed all the breeders. It's kind of funny and strange. So um, yeah, I still have 10 minutes to film. And then I'm uh, on my way to them. So this is pretty cool. I will turn the camera around. Look at this water feature. Isn't it huge? Wow. I would love to have a garden like this, but I think my neighbors wouldn't be happy with all the water. <laughs> all the sound of the water. We have more koi. And this is again the entrance of the museum. So then uh, we have a sea. So I think we have seen everything now. Um, it's not that big, but it's quite interesting. So if you have 30 minutes or one hour left, just go here to the Koi Museum in Ojia. And if you want to learn more about the history of the Nishikigoi. I'm going to grab my stuff and then I'm going to the Yagenji Koi Farm. And I'm going to do a lot of cool things today. So maybe it's in the next video or maybe I will put it in this video. If not, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that only 30% of all the viewers are subscribed, so that would be awesome. Don't forget to share this video and if you want to see more content, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section. Alright guys! So before I continue, I'm on my way to one of the coolest koi shops here in Ojia. So there are actually two shops here in Ojia. Um, one, you can buy a lot of products like nets, etc. But this shop has, for example, a lot of gifts you can give. Everything that has to do with Nishikigoi. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I've, I'm going to this shop since 2013, when I first came here to Japan. And the owner is a very, very nice lady. Uh, she always gives some extra presents when, when you buy something at her shop. She has some unique products. She has some new, uh, unique stuff. And I'm going to buy some stuff for you. Uh, I'm going to do a giveaway. I will tell you a little bit more when I'm in the shop about it. Um, and I will put a link in my description if you want to have more information. If you want to win some of those products that I'm going to buy here in the shop in uh, Ojia. So I have my mouth mask on again. It's very important. So let's see what they what they have this year and what they have inside. Is all Nishikigoi, everything koi. So that's pretty nice. Uh, hello. <laughs> so uh, 
to be honest guys i was already here back in the shop and i already bought some stuff <laughs> but uh i have to show this uh, of course to you you can buy everything you can buy jackets you can buy t-shirts you can buy well, there's something really cool i wanted to show you guys you can buy all kind of stuff like pins things iron patches for example these pins and i will try to zoom in the owner will donate everything to Ojia's public school education. So if you are here in Japan, Ojia, and you please come to this shop and buy some uh, stuff. They have some pretty amazing stuff you won't find anywhere around in the world. So if you want to win some of the stuff I just already bought, go to my Patreon website. And you can support me over there. Uh, and all the people who are a patron of my channel, they will join the uh, lottery for the stuff that I'm going to give away. So that's it. Um, I'm going to pay my bill here <laughs> and then I'm uh, going to uh, our next uh, location. So I just visited another shop here. It's behind me. It's a smaller shop than I visited before today. But the big difference between this shop and the other shop is that you can also buy a lot of stuff here like coin nets, socks, but the good quality you can't get in Europe. So um, a lot of dealers that travel to Japan in October or Otherwise, they come here to visit this little koi shop. This is also located in Ojia. It's next to, next to the real station um, and it's worth visiting. You can buy some amazing stuff over there. Um, what I have did there today, uh, you will see in one of my videos on my channel, probably at the end of the summer. So I'm on my way to the Jagenji koi farm. Uh, I look a bit tired. Oh man, <laughs> the jet lag is killing me. So you have a lot of 7-Elevens here and Lawson shops. We don't have that in the Netherlands. Um, I'm quite in a hurry now, but I bought some very nice breads. I really like those with eggs, cheese, tomatoes. I bought something I never drank before. Um, this energy, it's also not sponsored guys, but um, I don't know if it's working, but I'm pretty tired. There should be a lot of caffeine in here. So it's from here, it's around, I think, 15 minutes drive. Uh, Yagenchi is in the top of the Yamakoshi mountains. He is one of the farms that is located as high as possible. Um, maybe in other areas there are other breeders that are even higher but in the Yamakoshi area it's Yagenji. I'm going to say hi I've got 25 minutes left and after that I'm going to do my lunch, a real proper lunch. Uh, probably sushi and then I go to uh, Marusai so that will be quite exciting so finally back at the Yagenji koi farm I already saw one of the two brothers so let's go inside So we are at the Yagenji Koi farm. It's good to be back. This is one of the two Koi houses. Uh, the other one is uh, just a little bit up there on the mountain. And both brothers are today are here down and they have some time for me so I can just film their Tosai and small Nisai. These are, here. Oh, there are some pretty good ones in here. Uh, I really like it. Uh, we got, I think it's Shiro Utsui. I will check it, I will go there and um, let's see if, uh, if there's something beautiful in, the, in there that I can show you guys. Because it's always hard to see it from, uh, from this distance. They are hungry. <laughs> uh, this is all Shiro Utsuri, this side. There are a lot of them. Beautiful. So the other tanks are as good as empty. Oh, there's one still there. Don't fall in Evo, that will be good content, but not the best thing to do. And we have here also different varieties in this, uh, but these are probably Tosai. Mm, hi. hi, 30 October, hi. yes, hi. Probably one of the best views you have here at the Yagenji Koi House. This is their um, Koi House on the top of the mountain. This is one of the highest Koi breeders. 
They have some outside uh, outdoor ponds here and they have three koi houses, one over there, then we have this one and we have the bigger one. And in that bigger one, there are the parent koi for spawning and breeding at the moment, uh, but also some koi that are still have to go for shipment. Uh, Daisuke-san and his brother Toshinori wanted to show me that, so I'm very happy because I really want to see their parent koi. Normally in October you don't have the option to see, it, see them, so I think it's pretty cool to be able to see the, the parent koi. Weather is changing, uh, I think the sun is coming over there, so that will be nice at the end of the day. Maybe I can fly my drone here in Yamakoshi. It always gives some extra great, um, some great footage. So let's enter the koi house and I'm going to disinfect my shoes. And this is probably one of the most beautiful koi houses here. These are all parent koi. Wow, look at that Showa and that Asagi is so big. Unbelievable. So some of the ponds are empty now uh, for maintenance. This is the perfect period to do it this time of the year. Most of the fish are in the mud ponds. That gives the breeder time to do maintenance on this pond, filtration system, etc. I will get back on the filtration systems later in another video because that's something that's also very special to uh, to know about and learn from. So this is cool to see because normally they are packed with, with fish and now they're empty. Uh, this one is also empty and the other ones have probably fish that has to be shipped. So in this tank we have the females and on this side we have the males separate from each other. Uh, next week Yagenji will start uh, spawning for Jinrin, Kohaku and Sanka. So they will use some of those fishes for breeding. Uh, pretty interesting process. After they finish breeding, the fish will go to the mud ponds and enjoy their freedom. And the eggs will be hatched here at the koi pond. And when they're hatched, they go also to smaller mud ponds to grow as quick as possible. Uh, there are some very nice fish in here. Try to get them uh, for you on camera. Look at that kujaku, pretty nice one. So these are the males. You can see it also on the body volume. They're a bit smaller compared to the females. Big Kohaku, I really like Shiro Tsuri over there. And that Asagi is, is really, really big. What is going on guys? Welcome back to episode number two of the second day. Um, this morning I was at the Koi Museum and I was at the Yakenji Koi Farm and we're now at the Marucho Koi Farm. I hope there's someone here and if not we will go visit another breeder but today they are busy with selecting the very small baby koi. So I'm going down. I have to watch because this is very slippery. Uh, let's see if there's someone here. Uh, if not, then I go to Maruhiru Koi Farm. Oh, the... It's wet. We had some rain. <laughs> so it's difficult and I have to be careful that I'm not falling. This is one of the best views. Pretty cool. So I hope someone is there in that tent. If not, then I go to the Maruhiru Koi Farm. So let's see. To watch out so this is the water basin they keep all the clean water from the mountains here they keep it to uh, use for their farms the fresh water supply and this is one of the best views a lot of mud ponds here also some ponds that are used for rice growing rice but this view stays always very very beautiful so unfortunately, no one is here at the Maruju Koi Farm. That means that I will jump into my car and drive to the Maruhiro Koi Farm. <laughs> I am so stupid. The thing is, there is no steering wheel on this side. And in Europe, it is on this side of the car. So this is, I think, the 10th or 11th time in two days that I made the mistake to go to this side of the car instead of that side. It's getting annoying now. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello. Hello. So guys, we are at the Maro Hiro Koi farm and they are very busy with their selecting of the koi. That's outside. We will go there uh, after I filmed again this great pond. I think this is one of the most famous ponds here in Niigata. It's the round pond. And during autumn time, this pond is filled with only jumbo koi. We are talking about fish that are more than 90 cm. And look at that body. It's crazy. We have a very nice Hiotsuri over here. Akamatsuba, Asagi. Wow, beautiful. Yamabuki. So much wonderful koi. We have Jinrin. We have uh, Kiyotsuri, we have Shira Otsuri, all beautiful varieties that swim here in the big round pond of the Maruhiro Koi farm. So I will remove this only for filming and then I put it back on. Um, I'm a guest here uh, at the breeder so I won't make them afraid so that's why I'm using and wearing my face mask. So um, we are here at the Mar Marihiro Koi Farm. Uh, outside they are busy with selecting the small koi, uh, Showa. Uh, I will show you that uh, within a minute. For now, I wanted to show you this big pond. During autumn time, this pond is filled with maybe 100, 200 only Jumbo Koi. Um, it smells quite new now. Uh, they painted something, I'm not sure what, but it smells very good. And what I also see is that they have still a lot of koi in the tanks down here. I will go downstairs. I have to watch out that I don't fall in one of those ponds. And then I'll take you outside to film a bit of the selection process. I think that's cool to show you. Right, so, also... Whoa. <laughs> it's always very dangerous here. In the meantime, the sun is... Uh, coming out we had a rainy day or at least the sun is coming out we had a cloudy day and I have to watch out that I don't fall in one of those ponds and this is almost the tricky part um, yeah I hope it <laughs> keeps my weight so to give you an idea at the moment, this is like a greenhouse. So temperatures are around 30, 35 degrees now inside the house. Uh, I'm wearing a jacket, so it's getting pretty hot. I think tomorrow I'm going to wear uh, a smaller short. So we got still a lot of koi in here. Uh, those will stay here and go probably not to the mud ponds. Maybe they go on transport. And in the meantime, she's very nice to clean everything up because she knows that I'm filming so that's uh, pretty good all right again watch out that I don't fall into the ponds so the koi that are in the nets are ready for transport already sold and this is normal here at the Maruhiro koi farm uh, the water is always pretty cloudy but the fish are doing well and the water quality stays pretty good so uh, this is probably Nisai with a lot of different varieties. So let's go outdoor. And here they are busy with selecting the baby koi. This is uh, a pretty cool process to see. What a great day and what a great location to kick off today's video at the Yamakoshi viewing point here in Yamakoshi. With some mud ponds on the background, some koi breeders over there, we have a great location here today where we kick off today's video. And I can't tell you everything because I've just recorded one of my videos. It will be later on our channel. And I've did something special this morning and I will do a lot of more special things today. And the reason why I'm saying this is because there are just a few people in the world who are able to do what I'm going to do tonight. And so what I'm going to do, it is pretty early in the morning. I started today at five o'clock. I woke up, jumped in the car at 30 minutes after five. 
went to one of the koi breeders to do something special and I, after that I've recorded the video here. It's now 8.30 in the morning a.m. I'm going to visit as much as koi breeders if possible. That is the goal of today. Most of the breeders are busy with selecting their new koi. Just a small fry selecting the first senbetsu with uh, just based on the colors of the koi. Um, I hope I can show you a bit of that. We go probably to Marasai Koi Farm and maybe some other big breeders where they still have koi available within the koi houses. Uh, I'm going to jump in my car, we go visit breeders and I'm going to try to make today's episodes as long as possible. I cannot promise you anything but I hope there will be some great, great footage. visit is Iwashita Koi Farm. They still have some koi inside. Some really nice kosai. I got on some pretty beautiful ones in there. I think this is Nisai or Sansai. So it's always cool to see also the smaller breeders um, they only have three small ponds in this koi house let me try to zoom in on some of those really nice kushikis the quality is insane guys uh, this is probably his best tosai I see Tansho kushikis I see Asagi's Goromo some really nice really nice koi in here there's some more koi over there. We got some probably Nisai or Sansai over there and some bigger koi on that side. And we have the breeders, of course. They're busy and working today, ready to go, probably checking them up once. And the sun is also coming out, so that's pretty, pretty exciting, pretty good for filming too. the first breeders I ever visited back in 2013 when I first ca came to Japan is the Maruju Koi Farm. They have their koi farm located at one of the best positions in Yamakoshi. They have the best view over the whole Yamakoshi mountain area with some mud ponds. Um, over there is the viewing point where I just recorded some videos and I just saw that they are busy with selecting the small koi. So, I hope I am able to record something of that and we'll meet with um, Sigiyoshi from the Maruju Koi Farm. So I've just asked permission first to uh, record what they are doing. So they are working together uh, to get all the freshly and newborn koi and to select them on color. They will be sucked up through a, with some water through the line and then they go in the big bucket and when it's full they empty it in one of the other buckets and they put it back in the mud ponds it's pretty interesting because they are so they are so small i hope to i can show you guys how small they are you can only see the eyes so this is the first round and this takes probably most of the effort and time to breed koi after this round, after they went for four weeks in the mud pond, they will be selected again for the second round. They will be bigger, like 2 or 3 cm. And then only 5% or maybe 10% will stay, um, will remain. So I won't stay too long because they are working pretty hard, they need to stay focused. They are working with six people at the same time. Um, I'm going to visit another breeder, just going down the mountain, just see what we can visit. Uh, let me just do a sneak preview if there are some koi in here. Oh, there's some big ones in there, probably parent koi. I won't disturb them. I don't go in there with any permission, that's not, that's not nice. I'm going to jump back in my car and up to the next breeder.
Okay guys, so these are the parent koi and we are at Izumiya Koi Farm. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. And this is something we never see often because when we join here in autumn, those parent koi are not in this greenhouse. They are in the mud pond and they are here for breeding. And those are beautiful. They are so big. That Yamabuki is, <laughs> I don't know how big. <laughs> almost one meter. 90, yeah, it's almost one meter in size. Crazy. Uh, we have some nice Sanka, Ashikohaku, Showa. Really, and there was one very big Showa. Oh, wow. Yes, oh, wow. Right, okay, right, guys. It's hard to see, but this koi is on that poster. Wow. <laughs> Very, very beautiful. They are so big. Uh, this is all female. Then we have some other koi. And this is pretty fun to see because the filtration systems are just to our feet. Then we have more fish. It's a Yamabuki, Kohaku, Ashishoa. And most of the fish are already in the mud ponds. And the, uh, these are male? Yeah. Oh, they, these are the male fish. Uh, ah, okay. So Izamiya Koi Farm is one of the farms that had to suffer the, well, not the most, but if you look at the water levels, it is not straight. That has to do with the Chetsu earthquake they had in, well, more than 10 years ago. So you can see the Koi house has lifted more to the, to the left. And that is because of the big earthquake, the Chetsu earthquake they had back in the days. So you can see how big the power was of that earthquake. It's, it's crazy. You, you literally see the ponds going that way. So these are all filtration. These are the mats. You can probably see it between the iron and it all continues through the whole the whole facility just all around this is how they build the filtration systems here in japan so you're now going back to repair the nets <laughs> for breeding <laughs> thank you so much see you next time yeah, yeah. bye bye, bye, -bye. And the sun is out again. Uh, it was just raining when we were up in the mountains. In the mountains. Now I go back to my car and just say hello to the, to the next breeder. So just a quick visit here at Shinoda Koi Farm. They have a big new greenhouse on that side of the farm. This is um, totally new. Uh, when I was here the last time, 2019, this was just a parking spot. Uh, maybe they were busy with the construction. Uh, this farmer is, or this koi breeder, is famous about the uh, Hiutsuri, the orange and black koi, and of course also the Doitsu varieties. So I am able to well, get in the house and um, watch some of the koi. Uh, I hope they have some parent koi left. I see some Tosai. I will show you some of those ponds and maybe we can get a visit into the new koi house too. So now you will understand the logo if i show you those orange and black fish and this is one of my personal favorite varieties because it adds so much more color to your koi pond if you have something like an hiwutsuri or shida otsuri that's white so normally in autumn time those ponds are fully packed with koi just like the other breeders at the moment they are at the mud ponds um, I know the parent koi, or at least the jumbo koi, are in those ponds back in the days, but I'm not sure I will... Uh, I'm not allowed there, but I will check it out over there, and else I go to the, to the, new, the new facility. I'm very curious how they build it, and what they have inside. There are a lot of lava spiders, and I'm getting attacked by one now. <laughs> So we do have some koi here. I think it's all Nisai, two years old. They're not too big. 
I think the parent koi are at the bigger koi house at the new koi house because we have some show uh, over there but I'm not sure if they're parent koi so let's go that way well I just found out that the new koi house isn't finished yet um, let's continue to the next breeder it's funny because it's interesting to see how busy the breeders are at this time of the year we all we only see the fun time in October but now I really understand why it takes so much time and so much effort to create one single koi it's crazy so next up Hiroi koi farm or better known as Konias and they have a lot of Tosai in house so these are probably Nisai two years old, some Tansha Goshikis, some Ginger and Showa, some Normal Showa's. I always like the koi from uh, Hiroi Koi Farm, they have some pretty good varieties, some good bloodlines and I always like the koi they are selling, so there was a pretty good Goshiki in there too. So it is one of the breeders that has a lot of koi in his house. We have some more, I think it's Tosai, Jumbo Tosai, we have some Deutsche Showa, Jindrin Kohaku, some pretty nice fish in here. Same here, we got some more Deutsche Showa. This comes on. Lovely to see that this koi house is uh, full with koi. And they are hungry, look at that. <laughs> so that was a fun morning. Weather is cleared up. Um, it's pretty warm and I think I'm going back to the hotel to change my clothes to a short and maybe some flip-flops because it's getting pretty warm in here. Uh, I just helped with selecting the baby koi and it's, it's so insane how many people work at this farm and I'm really in love with the Showa of Isa. So I'm going inside now, let's see if there are still some koi in here, probably maybe some parent koi but um, it would be great if there's some one tank with Nisai or something that is still has to picked up for shipping so I can show you what I mean with uh, with the Showa so ponds still have koi not sure how many but um, uh, maybe these are parent koi could be uh, they look a bit older some good developed Showa so what I mean with the Isha Showa, the normal Isha Showa, when they are the younger age, they didn't, they don't develop the Sumi, the black, so much. So I will try to show you, because probably here, this is Nisai, and as you can see, most of the Showas still have <coughs> undeveloped Sumi. This is a perfect example, that swimming here, of undeveloped Sumi. Um, I hope they will come up a bit, so I can show you what I mean. But... Those are... But that is what I really like about the show up. So then we still have some koi that need to be picked up by customers for shipping. Some Jumbo Tosai. Oh man, I like them. Oh. We got some more here. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Alright, so let's check the things over there. I hope you guys can hear me because of all of the water. Um, so we have some different fish in here. They're a little bit shy. Also, or Tosai, or... So to give you an idea how hot it is, it is literally dropping down my face. I was inside the new koi house of Isa Koi Farm. Uh, I can't show you what they are doing inside. Uh, they are breeding at the moment and without any permission I'm not going to share that footage. So, great new koi house, absolutely beautiful and as you can see it's so freaking hot. <laughs> It's time to go for a lunch and I'm not sure if I'm going to make this episode longer or I'm gonna quit this episode 
but uh, just don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, and see you in the next video. Welcome back to a brand new episode here on the channel guys. It is hot. And before I start with the introduction of this video, I have an announcement. And that announcement is that you should subscribe to my channel. <laughs> if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it if you do that before watching this video. So click on that subscribe button, click on the bell notification. So every time when I'm uploading a new video, you will get a notification so you can enjoy your footage from Japan, the pond visits. Anyways, back to today. It's Tuesday. It is 10.45. Yesterday night and evening, I had a very special night. Um, you will see everything about that in the big documentary that is coming within one or two months from seeing this video. Um, it is Tuesday, uh, I'm still for five or six more days in Japan and today it is, let me see, already 29 degrees um, and it is 10, 10.50, sorry, so not 10.45 but 10.50. I'm in my shorts uh, on my way to Yamasan Koi Farm. So I missed my breakfast at the hotel, I'm just running into the quick quick run into the uh, 7-eleven and they have everything here it's... so I'm looking for something really healthy today it's there <laughs> don't drink it don't drink this too much but um I need this this is my coffee because I don't drink normal coffee so I'm looking for these sandwiches those are the ones I really like great Good morning. So I jumped in the car with Jeroen. Jeroen is uh, working for one of the biggest shipping companies, Ornafish, here in uh, Japan. Well, I think he's the biggest. <laughs> we are. Uh, we just had a visit at Yamasan, and it is now. I think almost 12 o'clock. Yeah, so it's almost 12 o'clock. So everyone is going to lunch, and we are going to visit Matsumi. Matsumi, never been there, so I'm curious. And later we go back to um, Yamasan this afternoon. Uh, they were busy with selecting Shida Utsuri, um, so it's fun to see. Good morning guys, so we arrived at Yamasan Koi Farm, first time that I'm here. Um, Jeroen San, he asked me to visit Yamasan. It's a nice breeder, it is located near to Choguro and Miyatora Koi Farm. For the people who know it, it's more on the east side of Ojia. If my geographic is still good at this moment, it is now around one o'clock, we just had a quick lunch. It's pretty interesting because this farm, Yamasan Koi Farm, is also, uh, it has some tanks inside an old mushroom factory. It's fun to see. They are busy with Senbetsu, they are busy with selecting Shida Utsuri. And it goes a bit the same like with Showa. They have to select the black, very small ones, uh, and they have to separate the white from the black. So it's interesting to see. Um, this is uh, when you're entering this, uh, this Koi house. Um, they have some boxes ready here for shipping. Uh, there are some times on it, dates, uh, some labels. So that's good, that will be shipped probably this week. Then they are here selecting the Shiro Mitsui. I will go to the other side because then we have more light into the, uh, into the hall. Just on the other side. So four people are quite busy with Nicha selecting. These are all the white ones, so they will disappear. But these are not the ones they want. So after they 
took them out with their small so he is selecting the, the black ones they go through the pipe into one of the buckets over there when they're finished they are going in a big bag and they are released back again in the mud ponds or the concrete ponds to grow there's a lot of black ones in there let me try to focus it and the white ones are going in there so this is what every breeder is doing in this time of the year beside breeding they are busy with their new born newborn koi and in this tank are probably ten thousands of small fishes they are or maybe they're not even one cm you can only see small eyes and a little bit of a tail pretty fun to see that th those will be two or three cm within upcoming months it is now half past two and I didn't do a lot. <laughs> I went on the lunch with Jeroen and we went to Yamasan Koi Farm but after lunch time it was pretty busy with selecting work and I thought let's go and go into the mountains. We have some nice stuff over here. We have a little shop. I have to buy something for uh, a friend of mine and I'm going to try to get up there and then I will probably go to Yamasan, oh, so, sorry, to Dainichi or to Marohiro Koi Farm. So I had to stop by at Dainichi. Uh, it's around four o'clock in the afternoon. And I wanted to show you one of the most, well, my personally one of the most beautiful koi houses. Uh, it's now in June. Um, and what is really fun is that most of the ponds inside here are still filled with, for, uh, with koi. So what I'm going to do, uh, I will show you each koi pond independently. Uh, let's see if we can spot something beautiful. But you have no idea how big it is. Uh, for example, if you can see how wide this greenhouse is, I think it stretches for almost 40 meters in uh, width. And the length is around 60, 60 meters, I guess. It's a lot of noise here because of the trickle filters. Every single pond, almost every single pond is um, also filtered with a big trickle. At the moment I see fish in every single pond, so I'm going to show you every single pond with koi. And there are some pretty big ones in here. So pond number one. Uh, this is the one without the trickle filter. <laughs> Guys, there are koi in here around 90, 95, maybe one meter in size. Like submarines. I'm a big fan of Dainichi. Um, I really like the bloodlines he uses. Oh man, look at this. Oh, unbelievable. Guys. They are freaking huge. Oh, those showas. I really like the traditional showa like this. Maybe if it had some more red on his head, it would be more, even more perfect. But these are all fish that I can dream of. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy how big they are. Up to the next one. Also very big koi. A little bit smaller than the koi in that, that one, but still a lot. And um, nice pancho. Really cool Jindering Kohaku there on the bottom. Great place. So let me see what we got here. Beautiful show is coming to us. Amazing guys. Beautiful Kindai Showa. And this Kohaku. Oh, I thought he wanted to say hello. Uh, this one is empty though. Let's 
see what we got here. Most of the time in this pond are the really, really, really big ones. And I'm right. Wow, wow. <laughs> that show is insane. Unbelievable. Four. Wow. I think she hit one meter. Definitely. So we're now at the other side for the first time. Some big koi in here too. Uh, let me walk around. Watch out where you step on. Someone is thirsty. <laughs> Oh, hello, beauty. So I had to turn the camera off. Uh, I just spoke with Shigeru Mano. He is the owner of the Dainichi Koi Farm. And I can come back within two days. Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, we go to the Big Koi house. He's gonna give me a personal tour and he's going to show me one of his best and his biggest koi. Uh, that is something really unique. Um, and I'm very happy that he is uh, able to do that and he's making time for me because they are in a very busy period at the moment with breeding, with selecting the first koi. Um, so that will be great. I'm very uh, looking forward to it. Um, I think I go to Marasai Goi Farm now. That's the breeder I wanted to visit all day, all week, but I didn't have the time to end up there. All right, we got some kids that are coming from school and uh, <laughs> waving. <laughs> Konnichiwa! <laughs> um, yeah, I, want, I really want to visit one more breeder today and then I'm going back to my hotel. Uh, but let's see if we can get some more koi on camera. Good morning guys, we've made it at Nishikigoi Niigata Direct, or better known as NND Koi Farm. They are busy with selecting their one-year-old fish, their tosai for domestic market. And it's pretty cool to see because they have some amazing fish in here, like Kohako Hiyotsuri. I turn the camera around, introduce you to the breeder. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> wow, look at this. That is a beautiful mix, guys. We have some great Kohakus. Look at that one. Wow. You have Hiotsuri, I saw Sanke. Wow. Those are beautiful. At this time of the year, most breeders are busy with selecting their just born koi. So I think it's fun to see that they're here at NND Koi Farm very busy also with the toe side. It's one of my favorite things to do to buy smaller koi and grow them up to Nisai, Sansai, for example. And everything starts here. At this age, you can pretty good decide or see what the future will be of a fish. Of course, it depends on a lot of different things, like how big is your pond, how much food do they get, what is the climate. So there are a lot of things that decides the future of a fish. But first of all, it has to be in the DNA, so the bloodline of the fish. And second of all, if your water quality is good, your pond is good, and you give good and enough koi food, the fish will eventually get a, uh, a lot bigger than, uh, than this size. So this is between, uh, well, I think uh, 10 and 20 cm. The, well, this one is maybe even bigger. So uh, it's a good size and you can decide already which one will have a nice pattern. Beautiful. So these are born in August, right? Yes, yes. last year August. Last year August. Hi. We have many customers. We have many Japanese uh, hobbyists who wish to buy this grade of koi and enjoy enjoy them themselves keeping in the pond fish 
Very like good that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Look at that sunken guys. Beautiful. Here you put it. So nice. Uh, beautiful. Mm. So we just got back from a great lunch, a real Japanese lunch. It was uh, very, very nice. Uh, I'm still at the NND koi farm. Uh, they are packing some koi for the domestic market. Uh, they're going to send that to a customer. And then we probably, or we maybe are able to get in koi house number B to uh, see of some of those amazing koi that are in that, that one, in that koi house. And I promise you guys, those koi will be really, really cool to see. I'm happy to see that there are still great fish in the concrete ponds. So not everything is in the mud ponds yet. Beautiful. These are the parent koi? Hi. Wow. It's uh, ma, ano, not only parent koi, but also the customer fish. Yes. They are so big. So that sanka guys is 97 cm. Yes. <laughs> wow. I don't know if you can see it guys on camera, but this Sanke and the other one, they are almost one meter in size. It may change one or two centimeters, but you have no idea how big this, this is. I would also love that for Haku. But those are so big. It's unreal to see how big those fish are. Um, every time you step out into a single koi house at a breeder, you can't imagine how big those fish are. I don't know if you can see it, but on camera. This sunk it. But especially the one is going down now. It's like they're almost one meter in size, but the body in that fish is like incredible. So they are done uh, with uh, the breeding part uh, here at NND Koi Farm. Uh, they have around 50 sets this year. So the first round was done very quickly and they are very happy with the results so far. So that's good to hear and uh, I'm looking forward to October to see how the smaller fish then would be of course a bit bigger around between 5 and 10 cm, the toe size. I'm really looking forward to all the varieties and the quality. But this is some kind of surreal or unreal to see how big those fish are. I'll try to, uh, to zoom a bit in on them. I will show you our, these are all male fish. And uh, we are growing, especially for the koi show this summer season. That, uh, so, normally we don't show it to anyone, but this time <laughs> Evo came to us so that uh, we are pleased to show you our uh, future, future male showfish. And also, this, in future, we may use this boy as our male parent stock.
both of these three koi shows a lot of white and the blood is on the white white skin so that uh, looks like a very really impressive koi mm. this uh, we are using underground water in this uh, facility and it comes from 110 meter down from the ground level and this is drinkable this people the people uh, living in this village low, uh, in the past drink this water so this is really good for for humans and also good for koi yes. yeah. All right, guys, good afternoon from the car together with Jeroen san. We are on our way to Aoki with a special reason. We are going to show you how they pack the koi, and then we're going to bring the koi together with Aoki and Jeroen san to the truck. And from the truck, they will go, go to a special destination somewhere in the world. So we're back in one of the koi houses of Aoki. Uh, he got here three or four koi houses. I could be wrong, but at least three. In this koi house, we have one, two, three, four, five, six ponds filled with koi, and we got two empty ones. Aoki is known for the much different variety. I think he is unique in the variety he breeds. If you enter one of his koi houses and you, you can watch in every single pond, there is one or two koi that you will like. And it's unique because most of the people like me, to be honest, like Gosanka a lot. But if you are sitting here and you take, take your time and observe these varieties, you will fall in love with them, definitely. So, a lot of varieties. We start with the two years old here. And let me try to cut off the air. So, I can show you guys a bit more of the koi. I see Hariwaka, I see Kishishui, I see, wow, look at that Goshiki. Unbelievable. Guys, look at those patterns, look at those colors. There are so much different varieties in here and they are all beautiful. I see Deutsche Sanke, that is great. Unbelievable, look at that guys. And they, those are two years old. I think they are between 25 and 35, maybe 40, with some exceptions, 40 cm. Oh, look at that one, the Jinri. Unbelievable. Wow, epic. So then we have Tosai. And they are hungry, I guess. <laughs> look at that. Just give them some small koi food. Watch this guys, watch this. They are going nuts. <laughs> hey. Now there's probably water on my lens, but no worries. Uh, again here, a lot of different varieties. Uh, a lot of Deutsche varieties here, fun to see. I think there are around 400 koi in this pond, 400 or 500. Amazing. Then these are, I would say, first of all, when I see them, they are Nisai or Sansai koi, but these are male parent koi. And how do I see that? That is because those fish, some of those fish are a bit older. You can see it, of course, on the skin quality, but you can see it also on the build. These are all male koi. Uh, they are a bit smaller than the females, and I will explain you why, because the females are over there, so you will see the difference. But there are some koi in here. Um, I saw a Deutsche Goshiki. It's not that one. Also a very beautiful one. Uh, but I wanted to show you that, guys, because that is such an amazing koi. And look at how red those fish are. That Benny is so strong. Unbelievable. I hope the fish that I was looking for... Oh, look at this. Look at this, guys. Wow, it almost 
looks like a, uh, a real Tsuri, but of course it's not. Um, well, let me see uh, if I can find her later. The Deutsche Koshiki that I wanted to show you guys is probably somewhere <coughs> on the bottom now. But that's a great point to show you. Okay, up to the next tank. Then we have the female koi, and those are a bit bigger. Wow, look at that! Butterfly! Okay, I want to know guys, your honest opinion, let me know in the comments. Do you like butterfly koi? To be honest, I am not a big fan of it, but I really like this one. It's huge, I think it's 65 cm. So it's one of his parent koi, including all of this. Uh, hello, buddy. <laughs> Kishishui, oh, sorry, Kishishui, uh, Ki Utsuri, very nice one, lovely. So we got an empty tank over here, we have Nisai, these are the higher quality Nisai, you can see it because they have very sharp patterns, uh, almost the same size, I will try to zoom in for you guys, so you have a quick look of the quality of these beautiful fishes, wonderful. And then we have more Tosai. Uh, but just like that tank, we've already sh showed you that. So I'm going to show you guys the shipment. They are busy now with shipping koi. Uh, I will try to explain a bit. And when we are done with that, we are going to the truck to get the ship, uh, to get the fish uh, to the airport of Narita. And then they will go to a country somewhere in the world. <laughs> so quick update um just went for a small talk here at shintaro koi farm uh, it's a little bit past 12. i think i'm going down to the sushi restaurant to eat some uh, sushi for lunch yeah it's 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 so unreal to be back here again i didn't spoke about it but so good to see all the breeders and seeing koi uh, this morning at Dainichi Koi Farm, like those monsters again. That's something I'm, I miss so much. And it's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to October. I think we will see a lot of koi, a lot of new koi, because Japan was closed for two and a half years. So I was thinking that normally you, when you go to a breeder, you see certain koi as Tosai or Nisai, and the year later when you come back, it's developed, and, but you still remember the koi. Now Japan was closed for almost two and a half years, we will see a lot of new koi that we haven't seen before, that are born two or three years ago. Um, so that's quite interesting. Uh, I think there's a lot of koi available. All right, I'm going to drive down the mountain. I have one and a half hour to get my lunch. I think it's 20 minutes driving there and then 20 minutes back, half an hour eating. I'm going for lunch, see you back here in a new video or I see you back in this video I will decide later uh, with the part here at the Shintaro Koi farm good morning welcome everyone back to a new video from Japan today a very exciting day um, we start here at the Shintaro Koi farm of course they are going to show me something really special uh, the Shintaro Koi Farm, they have bought some new parent koi from a very big breeder in the southern part of Japan. So it will be a nice video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, please just click on the subscribe button, the bell notification. 
So every, ta every time when there is a new video up, you immediately get a notification. Good morning, Kensuke-san, Saito-san, good morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's quite cloudy today, but I put on my shorts because they expect very high temperatures, 32 degrees. So that will feel like 40 here. Uh, I have to put my stuff in one of those trucks, I guess. <laughs> Just put it in here. Let's hop one of those tiny cars, but these are very strong. They even have four-wheel drive, so they're perfect to drive here in the mountains. Together with uh, Saito-san, we are going to the new greenhouse. Oh, not the new greenhouse, <laughs> one of the older greenhouses. So it's kind of special that we are able to see one of the new parent koi here at the Shintaro Koi Farm. And there are two very big koi in one of those farms. And together today with Saito-san, Kensuke-san, Kosuke, and the staff and friends of Kensuke, we are going to uh, put those huge koi in this bowl. And I will present them to you guys. And it will be very interesting to see what kind of new baby koi they will produce in the next few years. This is the second female Sakai fish farm and what I really like about this fish is the type of head but look at that Benny guys that Sumi is also incredible and also this fish has an incredible body that is look at this how strong that body is the bone structure is look at that shoulders guys oh man this is one of my dream fishes I really like it. Beautiful. Great job, Saito Sama. Yeah, <laughs> good. So Saito Sam just showed me the certificates. This one is the male, I guess. Yes, this one is the male. Yes. 
This one is from 2017, and the other one is from uh, 2011, and the other one is also 2017. Beautiful! Yeah. I really like. <laughs> Those two Sanka are <laughs> incredible. So, um, I was very happy to visit uh, the Shintaro Koi from now because I've seen those two beautiful koi. I have to pick up my stuff. Um, I'm planning to go to Marusai, but I did something stupid this morning. I forgot to charge my camera and I still have, let me see, 11%. So I think I go to Marusai, find a charger, <laughs> and then I'm going to sit there for one hour and just enjoy koi. Uh, it was a pretty hard week uh, with a lot of filming. Um, I've created a lot of content. So that's good because that was the goal of this trip. Of course, I had some other plans here, but you will hear about that later. And um, yeah, everything is going as planned. So I'm happy, guys, and I'm happy to be back. The strange thing is, I'm finally used to the Japanese times and I had some good nights of sleep, but I'm leaving within two days. So. <laughs> It's always too late. So maybe next time in October, I should plan some more days. So I have uh, some more days to get used to the Japanese times. Sun is coming out. I think it will be a very warm day. Humidity is very high. There's the sun. Uh, but I prefer heat and sun instead of rain. That is a very dangerous snake. It's so hot. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. Uh, I just drove from the mountains here to Noga Nogami, and I was here yesterday, but it, nobody was here. <laughs> yes, I was here. <laughs> so at Nogami Koi Farm, and um, they are busy with spawning. So that's pretty cool to see. This is the natural way of spawning. This is their last spawning session of the season. So that's, uh, that's really cool to see. We got two Kohakus in here, both seven or eight years old. And um, the male one is the more dark one, and I will show you the female too, because that's the, the, the beautiful Kohaku. And um, I will show you guys some of the fry that has already hatched. So this is Jinrin Kohaku, and it hatched two days ago. So you can still see the empty eggs. Those are the white one. And we have a nice, oh, look at that. <laughs> So we can show you some of the babies. They're two days old, guys. Let me try to get it good on camera. Yeah, you can see them. So they're very, very tiny. Tomorrow they will be released to the mop pond. So as you can see, there are so many eggs in here. And tomorrow they will be free at the mop pond and they can grow and get their food sources from a natural environment. So let's get back to the Kohakus that are breeding at the moment. So how many days do you think it takes before they spawn in the eggs? Tomorrow. So tomorrow will be, will be the big day. <laughs> they are between those brushes. Um, they do that so the eggs can hatch on that. And the koi like to swim around them and through the brushes to get excited for uh, spawning their eggs. Uh, I hope the Kohaku will come and visit, or one of one of those two. Maybe the male. Oh, I see a hat. Okay, let me try to zoom in. Oh, there's one coming. This is the male, guys. This is the male Kohaku, and we have the female chasing him. It's a bit hard, but that's because of the uh, oxygen that's on, and it's very important. Temperatures are very high. Oh, now we can see at least the head. Very good, Benny. Really, really strong. And there we have the uh, male Kohaku. He doesn't have. He doesn't have pattern anymore, but I know he has really good quality of Benny. And yeah, body. So yes, so that's the DNA. That, yeah, DNA. Wanna... So that's a, that's the reason I use. <coughs> yes. Oh, that's good to explain. Oh, there she is. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. 
beautiful. <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome to a new episode and we are still in Japan and one of the breeders here is busy with picking out some koi for their breeding project. It's really cool to see that so many koi are still in this uh, koi house. A lot of great kohakus, look at that guys, beautiful. So these are current koi, probably males. A lot of Tosa is still in house, so that's cool. And some Nisai, I think this is also Nisai. Beautiful. Look at those amazing characters. So this breeder is located next to the Dainichi Koi Farm. And look at those koi guys. I'm going to jump in his truck. I don't know if, he's, if he minds, but look at that Kohaku. Beautiful. We got two Showas. Oh man, look at the Benny and Sui on that one. We have a Kohaku over here. Another Showa. Very strong. Benny, but look at this one, wow. So it's closing up and then they are going to the other koi house for the breeding. That's pretty good. There he goes. So after just jump by at Hoshikin, I am now back at um, Shintaro Koi Farm. Uh, and what we did here was quite special. So I'm going to make a longer movie again, like you've seen three years ago for me. Um, it was... Oh, here's nothing. Um, it was one of the documentaries that did very well. A lot of people watched it. Um, so much good reactions. And there were even people who started with the hobby after seeing my videos. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Marusada Koi Farm and they are doing, they are packing some koi maybe to uh, breed with or release them in the mud pond but beautiful Tansha Showa let's go inside, watch out this is slippery <laughs> there they are working uh, sh shipping or mud pond? Uh, no no no, this one is the auction auction, the standard Hi. auction Hi. so I almost forgot it guys but the uh, it's Friday so there's the auction at the auction house um, so I will go there, so 12 o'clock, yes, perfect. And this is pretty nice to see guys, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's good show. There is the point for the auction today. Oh, beautiful show. So those go to the local koi auction here. I almost forgot it, we have to go there. That is pretty cool to see. All right, see you afternoon at the auction. Uh, After lunch. But in Australia, just in Australia, I only, only bring entry. And, the, and the, in Australia, everybody. You know, I don't go out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Arigato. Yeah. yeah, so just let... I think it's a good idea to drive quick to the auction site to see if breeders are already getting their koi to the uh, auction breeding house. I'm going to jump in my car. Oh, I left the engine on. That's not good. That's Oh, freaky. <laughs> that is the problem when you are trying to film yourself with a too heavy camera, you're not watching your environment. Uh, we arrived at the <laughs> Marusara Koi Farm. He just delivered his fish. We arrived at the auction site. Every Friday, 10 o'clock, local people can bring their koi to the auction site. Uh, but also the koi breeders, uh, it will start in the afternoon. What they do, they collect all the koi here 
with the boxes and then they will put it in a very very big pond and then they go through that auction house and it's really interesting to see so I will try to join uh, I'm going to turn the camera around because those people are thinking what is that guy from Holland doing here with his camera all right so I just put my put my face mask on I have to watch where I'm walking because there are all kind of lines over the pond here so this is the auction house this is where the auction house starts at lunchtime or just after lunchtime so local people like hobbyists and sometimes also breeders are able to sit in there then the koi will pass with this crates through the koi house and they will be able to bid on it i'm not allowed uh, to film inside um, it's already very nice that I was, i'm able to film over here because so it's already a good thing that I'm able to film. I had to ask permission first. I had to do some calls to stay here and, and make some movies. Uh, so, but I am allowed to film you the process, what they are doing right now. So Hiroi Koi Farm is now bringing their koi for the auction. Um, I will go over there. So these are all the crates the koi are going to. Because sometimes it's warm, they put over these nets. So the fish stay cool in the bags and of course the water temperature is also good to stay cool. So let's see what Hiroi Koi Farm brought to the auction here, to the auction side. Hiroi, also known as Konias, is a great breeder of, for example, Deutschu. And they just bring in some koi. And that is a kind of coincidence because there are the koi of the Marusada koi farm, those two. Look at those kujakus, they are beautiful. They all get a number and they get tied up and then they go through that place where all the other nets are, uh, koi are. It's hard working for these guys. So just to give you any idea how much koi are in here. <laughs> Uh, it's countless. I think there are already 300 crates with koi in this um, in this line. It's unbelievable. So let's see what we got here. If we see something interesting to show you, I see Yamabuki, I see some Goshikis. So they only stay in this bag for around two hours. That's not a problem. They have oxygen. They are in the shadow, and water temperature keeps them cool, keep the bags cool. So they will be fine. No worries about that. And um, from there on, they go back to the new owner. They take them straight away to the new ponds. And um, I see a lot of Kozanka, a lot of Kohaku, Sanka, Showa. Pretty interesting to see. I have to watch out here that there are no dangerous animals. Shiro Utsuri. More kujakus. Love it. Pretty awesome to see. Yeah. 
Recently, I traveled to Japan to experience how Japanese koi breeders work during the summer period. Today, I go out with Homare from the Torazo koi farm. We work at the mud ponds, and I experience how hard it is work during the summer as a koi breeder. After Hobar throwed in all the food, it's fun to see how many they are in one mud pond. I think there are thousands. It's like all small orange and white fish around 2 to 3 cm. I had to report at the Terrazzo koi farm at 8 o'clock in the morning. Homara was waiting for me here. On the agenda today is feeding the four week old koi, a visit to the big mud ponds, and a great lunch. So they get food every single day. Um, of course, they get the natural food from the pond, but I guess they get the extra food that Homara is giving them. Probably very high protein food. I think these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think maybe 10 or 15 fry ponds at one location. So for the Terrazzo Koi Farm, it's good to have them all at one place. That saves you a lot of time. I will try to make some shots of the um, of the fry. Here you can see how many there are. Look at that guys. Unbelievable, so much. These mud ponds are fed twice a day. In addition to feeding, Homara monitors the health and growth of the koi. The Terrazzo koi farm has not only Kohaku, but also Showa mud ponds. So this is all Showa ponds. And you can see the difference because there are many black, black smaller koi in here. There are so many over there, there. So this is all Showa. One, two, three, four Showa mud ponds. There are also a lot of frogs in here. Something they don't like because the frogs are eating the same food that the fish really need to grow. So here it's a bit harder to see because oh, now you can see. But maybe if I try to zoom in you can see all the black smaller showa on the bottom of this pond. They get two times a day food, so in the morning and in the afternoon. So the breeder has to visit him two times a day. Okay, let's go. After a 30 second drive, we have the next fry ponds all Showa. One, two, three, four, five. Two ponds of Showa. Oh, only two ponds, yeah. Terrazzo Koi Farm. Yeah, oh, next, after uh, five ponds uh, Kohaku. Ah, it's Kohaku. So two Showas and the rest is Kohaku. I think it's already 30 degrees outside. <laughs> we just did the last Showa and Kohaku mud ponds and now we're on our way to the Karashi and Tancho mud ponds. Uh, two years old, huh? Two years, yes. Nisai. So this is small Nisai. Not, not small Nisai, but hey, hello, look at those. That is cool to see. A Jinrin Karashi koi. Also. Look at that, guys. That is so cool. And Tansho. Oh, there they go. Here they go, eating at high temperatures.
on our way to the next mud ponds of the Terrazzo Koi Farm. So we arrived at the four-year-old koi pond and my Kohaku is somewhere here. Let's see if we can find her. Beautiful mud pond. Big mud pond too. A lot of sun, important. Let's see if we can get her in front of the camera. Good. First foot, foot. <laughs> There she is, guys. Looking for some koi food pellets. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching all the videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're seeing this, probably the documentary is not live yet. That means that most of the videos you have seen are the daily vlogs, but um, most of the content will be used for the bigger movie. So you won't see everything that I did in all those small vlogs, but um, that will be added to the bigger video that, is will, that will come later on our channel. So I just had a great dinner or lunch. I had some lunch with uh, the Terrazzo family and uh, the Nogami. They are busy with talking and I thought maybe it's a good idea to go to their new koi houses. They are on the other side of the road. Probably a lot of people already saw them in uh, my videos. The parent koi are in those ponds. So I'm very curious because I never saw the parent kois of the Terrazzo koi farm before. Only, of course, the Jumbo Kohaku is in the mud ponds, but not the uh, parent boys. That was Danichi. <laughs> so, first koi house. And the doors are open. The doors are empty. But right here we have some nice koi. Some nice sunken kohakus. Beautiful. Then we have more. Wow. Oh man. I think these are some of the parent koi. Beautiful. I think the parent koi are in that pond because they're covered. Uh, it took a lot of time and energies, the spawning process. 
Filtration systems are below deck. Yes, yeah, so the parent koi are in here. Oh wow. Hello buddy, come say hello. Oh man, that is a big hockey. <gasps> Unbelievable. Look at that head. Wow. Those are monsters. Look at the shore. Beautiful. What we got here is another Kohaku. Then I see Sanka is saying hello too. They're hiding. These are probably the males, but I'm not sure. Let's see if we can go to the other koi house. So this is a quite new one. And this is the other house since 1917 ah we got more Sanka Showa I think that Sanka is 90 cm plus look at the body on this Kohaku oh They are big. Our current boy. He's coming to say hello. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Beautiful. So this is a place where they, in the autumn time after harvest, they put the trucks out there and they measure the koi here, put them in the bowls and then divide them between the ponds. This is a big bowl. <laughs> I think it's 1.5 meter in, um, in diameter. We got all the nets. For the autumn, for the harvest, we got some feeding machines. Right. Okay, guys, so I go back to the barbecue. <laughs> One more look. I don't know if those are filled with food items. Yeah, they are. Some Tosai or Nisai, I don't know. Let me check it. All 
All right, I got back to the barbecue. This is my last day in Japan. Well, not the last day, but at least the last day that I'm here in uh, Niigata. Or today I'm in Ojiya. Um, I drive back to the hotel tonight. Then I go tomorrow morning to Tokyo Station. Um, then I have something to do in Tokyo for a couple of hours. Then I go back to the airport of Narita and my flight is at the end of the day. Then I will go back to Holland. Uh, not for that long. I will be at home for a couple of days. Then I have a small travel for myself. And when I get back in July, I will have my next trip and I will keep that destination a bit secret, but you will see it, it will be very, very, very fun trip. And of course, I'm coming back to Japan in uh, October. So that will be fun too. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching all the videos. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're seeing this, probably the documentary is not live yet. That means that most of the videos you have seen are the daily vlogs, but um, most of the content will be used for the bigger movie. So you won't see everything that I did in all those small vlogs, but um, that will be added to the bigger video that, is will, that will come later on our channel. So these bags, oh these bags, <laughs> these ponds are all empty. Uh, it's time to clean them and prepare them for the autumn.